and thank you all for taking the time to to um, meet with me today. And uh, I've been really enjoying these these webinars and uh, the CEO chats. Uh, it's a case that we uh, gives us me an opportunity to highlight some of the capabilities of the platform, and also uh, it's a case that explores some specific topics with use cases of the product, etc. And today's, uh, so really the intent of these uh, sessions is to uh, give some context as far as uh, specific features of uh, the platform, not just how to do it, but more of uh, why to do it. Um, so I'm trying to combine both of these things. Um, and hopefully you'll see some of, have some insights into some of the capabilities or deeper use cases of the platform. And usually the format of these is I share a couple of slides with a bit of theory not too far into that, and then I'll I'll dig down into a, uh, a specific demo of the platform, highlighting some some specific features. And the topic of this one is really the integrating with the CRM. And I think this is probably one of the uh, more important aspects of the platform. Is uh, from a strategy perspective, we as a company, um, as you've seen with the platform, we're not uh, when we integrate with CRMs. It is not a checkbox. <laughs> we go absolutely deep uh, from a technical perspective, and we have a lot of features and capabilities that uh, help you get the most out of the the CRM that you're currently using. So I think it's a an important topic to be uh, to be addressing. Um, so I'm going to start off at the very back. I'm going to uh, step go 10,000 feet up and uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, really the uh, the role of sales and marketing and how these two two groups play together. And really, the sales and marketing teams. Let's let's uh, state it what it is. We're here to um, all sales and marketing is really there to do is to sell more stuff and things. That's it, right? So uh, uh, from a, um, for both sales and marketing, I think we have to understand the, the data side of the equation because we're talking about software here. Um, software, uh, both the sales and marketing teams are going to be using a lot of data and to help those buyers through the journey, it's important to have a fantastic data strategy. So if we think about uh, at the top of the funnel, when we're doing marketing, doing target accounts or prospects, et cetera, uh, of course, we as companies are going to do a lot of research, right? We're going to find the data. We're going to, I should say, the, the accounts or the companies that we want to target or even the buyer profiles, all of this type of stuff. So really at the top of the funnel, the data that we're collecting is really, uh, you know, it's descriptive data, right? So company names, their locations, their verticals, or even in B2C, maybe it's demographic, this type of stuff. So this is the, the foundation of our marketing and sales programs. Uh, um, and typically where this data resides is quite often we're actually capturing this data or setting up this data inside uh, the marketing automation platform, Active Demand. Uh, some of this data may make it into the CRM or it is in the CRM. Maybe we have a bunch of spreadsheets, slide decks, reports, et cetera. And as we start doing marketing activities, our prospects are going to engage with us. Active demand is fantastic for collecting all of this behavioral data. And so uh, this behavioral data is really what we, in the, with our marketing hats on, are using for inference. You know, the prospect does this we can infer that they're interested in this. We can watch what they're doing on the website. We can see which emails they click, which uh, pages they visit, all of this type of stuff. And if they're anonymous, it's sure they're, they're engaged, but also the ones that we have the anonymity removed, they're gonna be doing stuff and active demand really collects all of this stuff. So typically this data is clear, well, clearly it's gonna be an active demand, um, but it's also in some of the other platforms and we expose some of this behavioral data and dash boards, et cetera. And then really the, uh, the best data of all is the factual data or the direct interaction data. And uh, this comes from people talking to people, right? It's not, uh, it's, uh, it's not inference. You know, if you're using active demands call tracking and you're recording calls, that's really what is happening. Um, or if you're recording chats or if you're looking at form fills or if you're looking anything that the prospects are doing where we're actually getting people talking to people, this is the direct interaction data and it is truly the, the factual data. And this data uh, typically resides in the CRM. 
right? It's, uh, you know, if our salespeople are talking to, to prospects, then uh, it should be, you know, both the calls are logged in the CRM, the, the, uh, the salesperson's uh, interpretation of what's going on, plus the direct connections or typically all of this data that is direct uh, interaction data is typically in the CRM. Now, and of course, we need to have a strategy that flows all of this data back up so that our foundation, it becomes more robust. It's a case we can do better inferences or speculations are less speculative and more closer to fact, I guess it is. So really, we need a data strategy when we're doing a, uh, um, a CRM integration. Now, a couple of observations on that last slide is uh, marketers are actually in control of the majority of the data, right? Is uh, the systems and like, uh, yes, sales are engaged, but let's face it, um, you know, our salespeople, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a unique lot of folks and they're typically talking to prospects. They might participate in some of the, the research, uh, but really it's gonna be anecdotally. They'll say, hey, go talk to these people or these people are important. And then they're on the phone talking to prospects. So really the data masters, if you will, if we're thinking about people in the organization, it is, it is the marketers, right? So as a marketer, you're going to be in control of the majority of the data or responsible for the majority of the data. And as marketers, we're gonna do a much better job if we have better data, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, this is uh, not an assumption, it's true. If we, have, if we could say with certainty that our database is pristine, has absolutely accurate data, let me tell you, as a marketer, that's, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're hunting. It's, uh, we're, we're going to be successful, but typically it's, uh, we're constantly juggling inaccurate data. But the better, I think it's, it's fair to say, is the better data we have, the better job we're going to do. And um, really, because of the, uh, the layer, the levels of data that I mentioned, the CRM should have the best data, right? And, uh, you know, because this is where our salespeople are talking to prospects. And if we've set this stuff up right, the, sale, the CRM is collecting some fantastic data. But this is the one area that the marketers typically do not have control over. They do not have control over the CRM. So it's a case that uh, there's got to be, uh, to get the best job possible, we have to be aware of uh, where this data is and uh, definitely this, this uh, boundary or the integration with the CRM becomes very critical in how we approach it. So it's a case that uh, I think it's, never mind, I think without uh, getting into the details, we have to solve the people problems first. Right. It's when I, the topic of this this uh, this uh, this this presentation today is about CRM integrating with active demand. But I think before we start connecting software, we have to we have to connect people. Right. The people there has to be a good uh, relationship between the people, and there's got to be some good agreements, some discussions, etc. So this is where we got to get the salespeople off the phone and actually engage with us as marketers. Um, whether we're talking about senior leadership, we have to have a strategy where we have communication and buy-in from from us inside the company because we're going to be tripping all over ourselves and we're going to get in trouble and and make a mess of things if we just start connecting software. So really, we need people and process alignment uh, to actually succeed with the CRM and uh, marketing automation system integration. And this was a quote that was uh, presented with a webinar I did with JP from Pipeline Deals recently. And it was really, uh, I thought it was fantastic. It was, uh, you know, marketing exists. It was, he took this quote from Dave Kellogg, is uh, uh, marketing exists to make sales easier. And uh, with our marketing hats on, if we really, really buy into this and, re and uh, understand that our job is to make it easier as marketers, is, ma is to make it easier for folks to sell, then it makes a lot of these discussions and of the integration go a lot smoother. Um, so we have to understand what uh, the, like, uh, what the, like we're, as marketers, we're constantly thinking the prospects, what are the challenges our prospects are facing on a daily basis so that we can, you know, highlight the pain points, help solve the pain. You know, if we can solve a pain, we're going to get people to engage with their marketing activities. Well, guess what? The salespeople have pain, right? So we sort of got to be, put ourselves in the mindset because uh, 
they they control the CRM and they're typically, you know, obviously they're an important part of the sales process. <laughs> they're actually the ones doing the selling. So let's understand, put ourselves in the mindset of the salespeople and try to understand the pain they fa they, they face on a daily basis. And clearly the number one challenge all salespeople face is time. Right. It's uh, the on a daily basis, they are trying to maximize their revenue uh, with the time they've been given at work. They don't want to work 24 um, seven. And uh, so if it's time, you know, like 80 uh, percent of their revenue comes from 20 percent of their activities. So they are wasting 80 percent of their time. So we need to find ways to uh, it's, it is always a negotiation if we can bring uh, bring. Uh, a way for the salespeople to more effectively use their time, let me tell you, they're going to come to the table and they're going to be very, very happy to uh, give you access to that great data in the CRM. So the things that are typically killing the, the salesperson, I think the biggest one is, you know, uh, chasing the wrong people right? Uh, or chasing the right people, trying to get them to connect or chasing the right people at the wrong time and all of this type of stuff. And as marketers, we have such good data and good information that we can help with automation, et cetera, to help the salespeople more effectively use their time. And so if we look at the two systems the um, and think of it in the context of, a, of the uh, 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 marketing funnel and the sales funnel, Clearly active demand as the marketing automation system, it is the top of this, it resides uh, for sure at the top of the funnel. And uh, it is the tool set used by marketers for applying pressure to this population of people that are not ready for sales engagement. Clearly marketing has a role throughout the entire funnel, um, but definitely it's a case at the top of the funnel, it is the tool set used by the marketers uh, in the marketing funnel. And the CRM is where the sales funnel exists. And the boundary between these two is really this lead prospect boundary here. And our job as marketers is to take a bunch, do a bunch of work at the top of the funnel, apply pressure, and then hopefully we can get folks into the CRM and introduce these folks to the sales organization. Now, clearly, if we, uh, marketing, as far as the domain, uh, masters of the domain here, uh, marketing is a control up here, right? So it's, uh, this is the marketing's tool set, all of the people at the top of the funnel, this is where marketing are engaging. And once it crosses this boundary, the owners of the relationship are the sales organization. So as far as responsibilities, marketing owns it up here, sales absolutely owns it down here from a people, a people and process perspective. Now, I think that uh, we need clear rules of engagement with the sales organization, right? So marketing and sales have to sit down and talk about, I'm going to go back, back to the slide, talk about this crossing this boundary because you're not going to have a lot of sales. Salespeople are going to come up here and help the marketers, uh, you know, target better, find these people, give them sort of direction as to who we need to chase. But once the direction is given, then marketing up here is doing their job. It's this boundary that is really, really important. So questions for uh, this boundary that need to be discussed with sales is first and most important is what is a lead? What do you want sales? Like uh, what is it that is going to help you do your job more effectively? Who do you want us to introduce you to? Um, what information is required for you as a salesperson to succeed with this lead? And uh, it's a case that uh, uh, and typically the sales organizations can be more than one person. You know, if there's one, it's easy. But if there's several, you know, who are we going to be sending this lead to? You know, are we doing account based marketing? Are we doing regional uh, reps or this type of stuff? So how do we distribute the lead to the right person? We've got to get the lead to the right person in a timely fashion, give them the right information so they can succeed with the, what we've just handed them. We've done all this work here on the silver platter. This is what uh, uh, this is what the lead is. And another question we we should be asking is, should we actually create a deal, right? So it, when we say this is a lead, when we're passing it to sales, 
typically the if we're passing it to sales and we're doing we've segregated the marketing activities to marketing and we're passing it to sales then clearly there's an opportunity that uh is with this prospect that we've sent to sales so you know the question is should we create a deal in the crm and what given the context of the uh the state of the prospect that we're handing across that barrier what stage of the deal should we be uh, pushing it into? Because not every every single person that we bring to sales is going to be top of funnel, the sales funnel, you know, because people might come in, hey, I want to buy, right? Uh, that's a fairly good signal. You know, um, uh, other people are, oh, we're currently looking, but, you know, if we've talked to sales and they say that they're looking for the, uh, where they're the first point of the funnel that they're going to engage with. So I think it's important to ask the question is, what stage of the deal should we set this prospect to based on the context? And in some CRMs, there's this concept of a lead and there's a concept of a contact. And uh, really that has to be discussed with the, 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 uh, the sales organization because they have some strategies in, uh, in, in setting up their, 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 the CRM. So it's, it's a case that this has to be set up. Now, um, consider actually building an actual contract, an internal contract between marketing and sales that clearly outlines what we've agreed upon from the marketing and sales organization with uh, in the context of what is a lead, right? Because we're going to, as marketing, we're going to have to define how many we're going to, you know, promise or like, make commitments on how many we're going to produce, but really, it's the definition of what we're trying to produce that needs to be clearly documented. And you should consider an internal contract on this. So it's very clear at the end of the year and there's no discussions, uh, or I should say uh, areas of, uh, of cloudiness, you know, is that we're creating this lead, we put it in this uh, set of the deal stage uh, as per our contract. And of course, you know, it's, it can be reviewed quarterly or what have you. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is really once we've passed people to sales, they are owning these, these prospects and this is funnel shaped. And the reason that it is funnel shaped because there's more people at the top than there are at the bottom. So naturally there's going to be this, uh, this pushing of people out of the CRM because there's no longer an opportunity. And if we're pushing them out of, not out of the CRM, but out of the, the sales funnel rather. So if it's out of the sales funnel, then clearly it's going to be passed back to marketing to do their job. So we're passing the ball back to marketing for engagement. So uh, it's a case that the same story here, we have to have clear rules of engagement. You know, uh, the questions that need to be asked or agreed upon between sales and marketing is, how do we know this deal is dead? How are you telling me? Is it closed lost? Is that how you notify us that this is a prospect that we can go or a contact rather that we can go chase again? How should we engage with these people? Who shouldn't we engage with? Because, um, you know, sometimes the deal is dead because, you know, it's this people will never buy from us. So quit wasting marketing's time. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be wasting marketing's time trying to uh, uh, polish a turd, so to speak. And uh, uh, what do I, uh, what data as a marketer, and this is something that you need to uh, ask marketers and internally is what data do I need as a marketer to succeed? So what data is in the CRM uh, that do I need to succeed with engaging with this, uh, this person that fell out of the sales funnel? And again, consider a contract right, is consider an actual document that highlights this with both organized, both representatives from the two teams to actually sign the document. Now, uh, I would say uh, the stickiest part of the whole story is really in here, is uh, during the, uh, uh, the, the part of the funnel where sales are actually engaged, right, back to the original, uh, the challenges that salespeople face, um, you know, it's this time aspect. So there are people in the funnel where sales are engaging, where marketing can actually help, right? So it's here that there's a, a marketing can play a very, very strong role in, but it is really, really important that there is alignment, right? Because this is, this is the part of the, the, the funnel where uh, sales are in control and marketing is there to help. So it's a case that uh, 
but really there's got to be some very, very good coordination in this part of the funnel. And clearly there's got to be this reflection of the data from the CRM into active demand so that uh, marketing has very good data. So there's a technical aspect to this as well as the personal aspect of this between the marketing and sales organizations. So same story here, clear rules of engagement. And the biggest question is, how can we help, right? That's the question that really should be asked of the, of the sales organization. For those people you're currently engaged in, how can we help get you better use of your time, right? How can we help accelerate the process for you? What is it that we can do with our tools and our expertise to help move these people through the buyer journey? Uh, when can we engage, right? What is it that is the prospects going to do or how are you telling us that we can engage with this, uh, this population of people? Um, who and when should we never engage with, right? That's very important. I think that's because uh, it's, it's, uh, there's going to be, uh, we don't want to screw up the deal. We don't want to get in the way of sales. So really it's a case we should be asking the question is uh, when, you know, who should we never engage with? And really, this is this should be the case for all engagement marketing, but this one is really important to define. What are the goals of engagement, right? What am I trying to do explicitly? What am I trying to get these prospects to do to help sales? And again, this I keep reiterating this, and because I think it's uh, this was introduced to me as a concept by uh, JP from Pipeline Deals. Consider a contract, right? Get it in writing. Right is uh, the best way to make sure that there's alignment is uh, again the uh, uh, is if you write it down. Now, uh, the last part of this this story here is the of course the after the sale. So once somebody is purchased and they're actually now a customer, clearly this is a, a role for marketing to cross sell, upsell, uh, etc. So as expand the sale. And marketing can help considerably, but the responsibility quite often moves into marketing because sales are really about hunting the next deal, typically. So it's a case that now we're in this phase where we're engaging with customers, right? And same story here, clear rules of engagement on the people side is, uh, again, when can we engage? What's, when is it you, uh, what is the signal that indicates that this is ready for sales uh, marketing engagement? Again, what are the goals of engagement? Are we trying to uh, get this person to uh, do a case study? Or you know, what is it that we can do from a, sale, a marketing perspective to help sales cross sell, upsell, et cetera? And uh, which people within the organization that just purchased can we engage with? And again, I'm going to say it again, uh, is uh, uh, consider a contract, get it in writing. So really, I think that uh, all of this, and I, I know uh, uh, we're going to get into the, the, the details here, but I wanted to start with philosophy and get some strategies in place and et cetera. And I think that we have to go back to the very first slide. What is the role of marketing? And I think it's, uh, we need, it's about make, making it easier to sell. So we have to have clear uh, um, alignment between the people, between marketing and sales. And I think that uh, before you start connecting uh, software, active demand to the CRM, is, uh, it's got, you, you got to be talking to the salespeople before we make any connections. Um, we have to, uh, because I've seen time and time again where people start connecting to the CRM and then, you know, the VP of sales comes down the mountain and says, what the heck is going on here? You know, <laughs> I'm seeing way too much information or you're 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 messing my, my you know, you're you're cramping my style or whatever it is. And uh, and if you're starting the first engagement with sales is, hey, how did you screw up my CRM? It's going to be a lot more difficult to actually uh, <laughs> dial it back and get these contracts in place. And uh, really, it's a case that, uh, and think of this, is the more you help sales, the more they're going to help you. They control the fantastic data that's in the CRM. And uh, really, if you come into it with the, the thinking that I'm here to help, uh, let me tell you, they're going to be very, very excited. Because let's, uh, one thing about sales is they are coin operated. They, uh, they want to do less work and make more money. That's the reality of it. And again, this one here, it's a, it's a bit of a touchy subject, but I think that uh, consider internal contracts throughout this entire process. Because if we can document it, get clear, stake in the ground, this is what we've agreed to, then I think it's going to be make things a lot easier during the integration.
action. So that was the uh, um, the slides part of this, and uh, I think I'm going to uh, talk about. Uh, so throughout this demo, like you know, we uh, Active Demand integrates with many CRMs, and uh, I'm I just have to pick one out of out of the hat for this this demonstration to give some examples. And the one I'm going to be doing the dem demonstration with here is using pipeline deals. But again, all of this the stuff I'm showing here can be is true for all of the CRMs that we integrate with. So I'm going to start with. Uh, uh, you know, when the, typically when we first start the uh, engagement with a, an integration is if we've just, with a new fresh install of active demand, uh, usually the data is really, uh, the data that we're going to start with is actually uh, in the CRM. So what we're wanting to do is take the data from the CRM and particularly it's the prospects that are not currently engaged with a, uh, with a salesperson. So the first part of this, the integration is going to be pulling data from the CRM that are the people that are dead out of the uh, uh, not in the funnel or uh, basically the, the data is in the CRM to start with. And it might be a mess to begin with, but the, the first part of this, this uh, discussion is going to be taking the data out of the CRM because we're, there's lots of good data in here. We're going to start with taking the data out of the CRM. So the first thing that we need to sort of think about as a uh, marketing organization or is uh, what data do we want? right? What data is in the CRM that we want? And typically it's the metadata, right? So the metadata means that we've got to start building custom fields in active demand. So um, it's a case that uh, uh, we, we look at the, 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 uh, the schema of the CRM and uh, pick that which we need as marketers, right? We don't need everything. And, and uh, what that's gonna involve is building out custom fields in active demand. So we are going to, one of the uh, good ones to start off with is a deal stage, right? I think that's a good one, uh, deal status, because we might want to be only engaging with the people that uh, have a, don't have a deal or the status is closed, lost or something like that. And the classifications of the prospects, the uh, the industries, all of this type of stuff are great questions to be asking uh, yourselves as to what you need to succeed for personalizing, building trust, doing all of the things that marketing needs to do. So it's really coming into active demand, going into the account settings and building out all of the custom fields that you need from the CRM, for the data for the CRM. And then once you've connected, Connected the CRM, and uh, there's typically an authentication process. I'm not going to go through that that uh, in this this uh, this this uh, presentation today. But uh, then it's going to the CRM contact updates, and this is instead of just bulk importing everybody, because you can go bulk import everybody from the CRM. Is I would actually start here. And this is the, uh, you know, depending on the CRM type, some of the CRMs, it's a scheduled poll, other CRMs, it's a, a web hook where we're uh, doing real time connections uh, to the CRM, but you set up the connection from the CRM to active demand. And uh, depending on the CRM, some, um, uh, some CRMs, you have an option to pull in leads as well as contacts, um, but other CRMs, it's just, here's the database, pull it in. So the most important part of this, uh, this field mapping from the CRM to Active Demand is this here, is the lookup key, right? And Active Demand's deduping is done, the lookup field for Active Demand is the email address. So we have to have an email address to map for lookup key. We can have, uh, we can use things like Twitter handles or contact IDs if the, the database is not going to be uh, email addresses, but typically as marketers, we're dealing with email addresses, right? So it's a case that um, we want to uh, map the, the uh, most important one is the email address. Second uh, most important is definitely the first name because quite often we're using merge fields for the uh, uh, dynamic fields rather for, the, um, uh, for our personalization. And uh, then it's the case the organization is really, really important right, is pull in the, the company name of the organization, map it. And finally, I think that the, the one of the uh, more important ones for personalization is getting the contact owner 
mapped into the contact owner, the contact manager in active demand. And uh, don't forget about the uh, updating existing contacts. And when we're doing updating, it's a case that uh, there's a checkbox on like, for example, here, uh, where's the organization uh, name? I'm just gonna right here. You know, don't forget about this little checkbox right here. Because that's saying that, uh, and this should always be checked for most stuff because the data, this is saying the data in the CRM is the master, right? And uh, once we've mapped that, uh, it's a case that uh, go next and it'll give you the option to bulk import everything that exists. And that's typically, where you, there's where you do your bulk import. And then now, once we've uh, got our bulk import going and we start doing marketing activities, I think one of the most important things is, again, back to uh, this uh, slide here, it's this boundary here. Because if we're going to do marketing activities with the dead prospects, it's how do we introduce people to the sales organization? And of course, this is managed in the lead processing workflow. So this is where you're going to define the flow as to what is a lead and who are we sending it to? And are we creating a deal in the CRM? So this, uh, this workflow fires whenever a prospect, you know, submits a form, uh, uh, chats, this type of stuff. And when it fires, you can do all the decision making. And quite often, like what we do in our organization is we actually send the lead first to marketing and wait for classification. And our marketers actually classify the leads to maintain their end of the contract with our sort of sales organization. You don't have to do this, but it's something to consider. You can do a wait for change, wait for a classification by marketers. And then once it's classified, you can send it off to the sale, uh, proper sales organizations and consider using our claim system because this allows us to, uh, you know, basically send the lead to a group of sales or uh, sales team, uh, salespeople. And then the person who claims it, they become the contact owner in active demand. And then uh, we can uh, post it to the CRM based on our discussions and our contract with the sales organization. So, you know, we can create the deal. And most of the CRMs that we actually integrate with, there is the concept of creating a deal or an opportunity. And once we create the deal, we want to, we, uh, the person who's claimed it is the contact owner. Of course, if a deal exists already, we do not want to change the deal stage. And it's a case that uh, we will uh, post the deal in the proper deal stage and consider actually scheduling a task uh, with the prospect, with the uh, salesperson after the deal is created. The task could be something like phone this person or something like that. And you have to talk to the sales organization. And this is really not to hold them to tat, uh, hold their you know feet to the fire to get something done. It's more of, again, how can I help you? What is it you're typically doing right after that deal is created? And quite often they're going to schedule a task for themselves to go follow up with this person. So do it for them. That'll make them happy. Now, whenever we post to the CRM, the data that we're going to push to the CRM is our metadata. So in our account settings, we're going to have our, our fields that we're going to update in the CRM. So you have to be extremely careful when you're doing this. And I argue you want to have the minimal amount of data being overwritten in the CRM when we post. So the, the, we have give you options to map everything, but typically all I will map is the first name, last name, and email address and uh, let the CRM take care of uh, who, what the company name is, right? Because we don't want to create duplicate organizations, this type of stuff. So quite often, I won't even map the org name when I'm posting to the CRM. Most of the CRMs we integrate with, we actually have a set field object. So if there's specific data that on a contextual basis that you want to post to the CRM, instead of just mapping everything in the CRM mapping uh, uh, part of the product, you can actually, you know, snipe, you sort of like using a sniper rifle, you can pick and choose specific fields that you want to set based on context. Like, for example, I download an asset. Maybe I want to set that this person's downloaded a white paper. I'm not sure, right? And then when we're flowing the data into the CRM, I see a lot of people, um, uh, we do have an activity posting workflow that flows data into as transactions onto a timeline in the CRM. And I argue you don't want to post too much this way. 
right? And the reason being is the CRMs just typically aren't geared to handle these massive timelines of transactional data like we have in uh, Active Demand. So it's a case that uh, uh, we've done, what we've done is that we've, we've exposed that in our Chrome extension using our prospect insights. So in the old days, I see people posting email opens, email link clicks, all of this stuff in the CRM, but you don't need to. Ask the salespeople to install the Chrome extension and all of this stuff will automatically be exposed in the CRM. So we don't have to overload the CRM with all this transactional data. They can use the Chrome extension to see this data, right? So I uh, really, it's about, and I've seen this as well, is that the, the salespeople, oh my God, you're just uh, pushing so much information to the CRM, please make it stop. And then they shut the link down and all of a sudden we're in a bad spot where we're you know, not talking technical, we're putting out fires internally. So there's some great data. The simple, simple thing to show the salespeople is prospect insights and the account insights, because this is some great information to help the salespeople save time right? And also it's a case that you, the, we have the uh, sales dialer that uh, saves time for them. And uh, as well, I'll go back to my slide here and back to the question of how do I help, right? So we're now in this place here where we've actually passed the deal into the CRM. So now the question is, is how as marketers can we help you, Mr. Salesperson or Mrs. Salesperson, uh, more effectively use your time? right? And so one way that is easy is creating user drip campaigns, right? These are drip campaigns that are only exposed to the salespeople. So a user drip is, uh, uh, it's a case that it, uh, it's triggered by the salesperson. And so, for example, they, you know, they can assign a drip campaign saying, hey, I tried to call you, you were busy, busy is good, pick a time on my appointment scheduler. So the campaign starting step that is user drip are the only drip campaign types that will be exposed in the uh, Chrome extension for the salespeople. So again, it's what am I doing, you know, how can I help? Man, this is a fantastic way to help a salesperson is give them some tools to, uh, to uh, nurture some prospects that they're trying to get to book a meeting with them. Set up an appointment scheduler for them. Oh, they'll love you forever. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's a case that uh, there's the user drip campaigns. And when you're doing these user drip campaigns, don't forget your goals. And typically what we want to do with the user drip is if they've opened an email or replied to, I should say, replied to an email, phone, deal state, whatever, you want to get the prospect to uh, kick out of this automation because, you know, automation is fantastic, but uh, salespeople, a good way to uh, burn a salesperson is have all these emails where they don't have control. But uh, they do have the control in here to remove people out of drip campaigns as well. Note that they can pull people out of drip campaigns right here in the Chrome extension. Now, uh, it's a case that uh, there's also a, another fantastic way we can help is um, it's a case that, uh, you know, uh, prospects that uh, are unresponsive. So we can do the contact change drip campaign. And if they move a deal stage or set some type of a flag in the CRM that says this person's dead, uh, but there's still an opportunity, they can trigger uh, drip campaigns automatically, or you can set them up to trigger drip campaigns based on the state change of the prospect. So you can say, for example, deal stage is unresponsive or there's a metadata change saying they're unresponsive. Using the contact change drip campaign type is a great way to provide value in the, uh, during the stage where the prospect is in this part of the funnel here. And then finally, the last thing I'll talk about is, of course, once the prospect has bought. Right, so now there's a time for uh, marketing to, in, to engage. So we can do drip campaigns based on, um, for example, we do collect for a lot of the CRMs a deal one history item when somebody closes a deal. So we can trigger a drip campaign based on the deal uh, closed one, I should say the deal one history item. Or we can build audiences of people who are in the deal stage of um, uh, closed one right? And or the state of uh, opportunity closed and status one. And the reason we build an audience for this 
as opposed to just using a contact history trigger or a metadata change is with the audience, we actually have the benefit of linking the audience into the ad platforms. So if somebody just bought, we can start retargeting these people with ads saying, hey, thanks for, um, thanks for buying. And uh, you know, here's some things to think about, tell your friends, like this is a great campaign, customer reviews and testimonials, getting the person to you know, give a, a review right so they can you can set up an entire review process where if they give you a positive review off to social media they go if they give you a negative review feed it back to sales and let sales engage with the prospect so that's pretty much the uh, concludes this uh, this uh, this se this session and really I hopefully I'm, I've communicated that there's uh, there's really a people problem to solve before we do this fantastic technical uh, integration with the CRMs because Active Demand has got fantastic integration with the CRMs and uh, really the the biggest challenge to face with all of this is really getting people talking to people within the organization.